Well, hello again, and welcome back. Um, today, we're going to talk about doing some calculating uh, with numbers in science. We're first going to talk about uh, scientific notation, which should be a review of some of your pre-algebra math, and then something that will be new to virtually everyone, a uh, discussion on significant figures, which happens to be a pretty important concept, and we're going to hit that pretty hard today. So first, let's talk quickly, and this should just be a review of scientific notation and how to express numbers in scientific notation. Um, sometimes we use really, really large numbers in science, and sometimes we use really, really tiny numbers in science, so it becomes easier to express those values in scientific notation form rather than writing out the entire number. So, uh, first of all, I need to mention, make sure you guys get your calculator soon. Uh, you'll need them for tonight's homework. Um, if you don't have one, get one. It must be able to handle exponential notation. Now, the one that I'll be using today happens to be a TI-84, but you don't have to get one that's this nice. Uh, you'll notice it has a couple of buttons that we'll be using uh, that are pretty important. I call this the carrot key right here. It sort of looks like the rooftop of a house. We'll be using that. Uh, quite a bit. And then there's also an EE button. Now that's a second function button. So if I go second function and this comma, you can see the double E and that means times 10 to some power. So we'll be using that later on um, in this discussion. Now once again, you don't have, to have one this nice. You can just get an inexpensive scientific calculator, which you'll see me use and even cheaper ones throughout the year on the video presentation. All right, so quickly, uh, how, do I, how would I write a really large number, like 245 million in scientific form? Well, we take this number and we move the decimal, so this number becomes larger than 1, but smaller than 10. So I'm going to scoot the decimal right here between the 2 and the 4, and call this 2.45 times 10 to some power. Now the power of 10 will simply be the number of places we move the decimal, which in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 245 million expressed in scientific form would be 2.45 times 10 to the 8th. Once again, this number here has to be larger than 1 and smaller than 10, and 2.45 fits that description. Then we simply multiply it by a power of 10, and that power of 10 is simply the number of places we had to move the decimal um, to get that value. All right, what about a number smaller than 10? So 0 0.0003487. Excuse me, a number that's smaller than 1. I think I may have said 10 by mistake. At any rate, this number is smaller than 1. Um, we're going to choose a value to begin with that is larger than 1 but smaller than 10. So I'm going to choose 3.487. And this time, of course, we're moving the decimal in the other direction. 1, 2, 3, 4 places. So it's 3.487 times 10 to the negative fourth power. So since this value is smaller than 1, it'll be a negative power of 10. Since the value up top was larger than 1, that's a uh, positive power of 10. Now I hope that's all the review you need. If you need more review or help, you need to get together with somebody um, to help you out or see me before or after school, and I can give you a hand. All right. Now the important topic of the day, significant figures. I want to give you an example of the need for significant figures. Here I have a ruler, and I'm measuring this, this line right here in white, and I want to know how long it is. And I want to write down as many digits as I possibly can, given this ruler over here uh, on the left. So don't you agree that the length of this white bar is between 6 and 7, and we'll call that centimeters. So I can say 6 point something centimeters. Now if you look carefully, and I'm going to try to zoom in on this for you, and try to get, uh, she's not going to focus very well, let's back out just a little bit. Alright, there we go. So let's see, um, I think that it happens to be uh, let's see, a bit bigger than 6.1, but not quite to 6.2. So I'm going to call it 6.1 something. 
Now I know it's between 6.1 and 6.2. Um, so I'm going to estimate one digit. So I'm going to say 6.15 centimeters would be the length of that white bar. Um, I can't estimate anything past that that 5 right there. I know it's between 6.1 and 6.2, so I'm certain about the 6, and I'm certain about the 1, and I can have one digit that is an estimated digit, and only one estimated digit. So this measurement here, using this ruler, is accurate to three significant figures. So I'm going to say that that measurement there um, has three significant figures. Okay, let me zoom back out here so we can see our paper. We can do the same thing when we're measuring volume. This is what we call a graduated cylinder. And a graduated cylinder is a cylinder that holds a liquid and the liquid um, can, it's, the liquid's volume can be measured um, in milliliters using the graduation marks on the graduated cylinder. Now, don't you agree that the volume of this liquid here is between one milliliter and two? So I can say one point something. I know that number for sure. Do I know the next digit for sure? Well, let's see. 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 1 1.6. It's almost to 1.7. When we use a graduated cylinder, we read the bottom of the meniscus. So you see how that curves up there? Uh, water's a polar molecule and it sticks to the glass or plastic in the cylinder on the sides. So we always read the bottom part of this curved portion of the liquid that we call a meniscus. Now, I know it's between one point, what do we say again? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's between 1.6 and almost 1.7. So I'm going to write down 1.6, and I'm going to estimate one digit. I'm going to call that 1.69 milliliters. Now, what if somebody wrote down 1.7 milliliters? And say, well, that's probably a good measurement, but wait a minute. I think I can estimate if that's If that is right on the 7, and I'm certain it's on the 7, I'm going to call it 1.70 milliliters. So either of these would be a correct measurement with this graduated cylinder. I can call it 1.69, and since I'm estimating that last digit, maybe it's 1.68 or maybe it's 1.70. So both of these measurements here, I would say, have three significant figures in them. Um, I can't say 1.700. I can't say 1.699. I simply can't do that with the accuracy of the cylinder I have here. I can estimate only one digit in my measurement, no more than that. Now, I've answered this question a couple of times for you. We'll see if you've been listening. How many digits in a measurement can be estimated? And the answer is only one. We can estimate one. Now we write down all the numbers we know for sure, plus one estimated digit, no more than that. Okay? Now, on page 47 of your textbook, there are a set of significant figure rules. You have to become familiar with these. Please don't go home tonight and say, oh, the math is too hard, when all I'm asking you to do are some significant figure problems. It's no math at all. It's a matter of you reading and becoming familiar with the rules, which will take some time to do this. You have to pay the price and memorize those rules. Let me go with them quickly, over them with you quickly. So I'm going to turn this uh, to a blank page, and we're going to go through those rules really, really fast with you. Rule number one, and we're going to call these the SIG FIG rules. And of course, SIG FIG stands for significant figures. So the first rule is zeros appearing between non-zero digits are significant. So zeros between non-zero digits are 
significant. So if I had a number like 303, and we'll say that that's milliliters, that zero would be significant. So I would say there's one, two, three sig figs in that measurement. If I had 10,432, um, I don't know, feet as my measurement, I would have one, two, three, four, five significant figures. So zeros between non-zero digits are significant. Let me do one more for you. If I had 1.002, and let's call this centimeters, these zeros are between non-zero digits, so they are significant. I would have one, two, three, four significant figures. Now please just don't think that we're going to count how many digits there are in a measurement, and voila, that's the number of sig figs. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Rule number two. Zeros appearing at the front of all non-zero digits are not significant. So zeros at the front of non-zero digits are not significant. Now what does that mean? Well, sometimes you'll see in your textbook 0 0.32, and we'll say that is, I don't know, we'll say liters, okay? Now that zero just alerts me to the fact that a decimal is on its way. That zero is not a measured quantity, so it's not significant. So this measurement would have two significant figures in it. If I had something like this, um, 0 0.00437 kilograms. Think about that. Well, non-zero digits are significant, so those three are. And these three zeros are in front of a non-zero digit, so those are not significant. So that measurement would have three sig figs. A quick way to check yourselves is to write that measurement in scientific notation form. Wouldn't that be 4.37 times 10 to the negative third? So couldn't I write this number like this without those zeros? Since I can write that number without the zeros, those numbers must not be significant. Okay? Rule number three states that zeros at the end of a number and to the right, now that's important, and to the right of a decimal are significant. Okay, so numbers at the, or zeros at the end of a number and to the right of a decimal are significant. I'll write down a couple of measurements for you. Let's say I put 31 uh, milliliters, 31.0 milliliters, and 31.00 milliliters. Which measuring instrument was the most accurate? the one that measured to the nearest whole number. By the way, the last digit I wrote down was estimated, remember? The one to the nearest tenth or the one to the nearest hundredth. Well, obviously, the one to the nearest hundredth was the most accurate. This value here has four significant figures. So I know this is my estimated digit. I'm only allowed to write down one of those. That means I know that this one is for sure. And of course, the one and the three are for sure also. The one above has three significant figures. This is my estimated digit. So I know the one and the three for sure, but I only know that zero there is an estimated value. Here, I only have two significant figures. 
that one is my estimated value. I have no idea what comes after it using this measuring device. So once again, zeros at the end of a number and to the right of a decimal are significant. All right, and then finally, the last rule. Zeros at the end of a number, but to the left of the decimal may or may not be significant. If a zero has not been measured or estimated, but is just a placeholder, it is not significant. A decimal point placed after zeros indicates that they are significant. I'm going to shorten that up. Zeros used only as placeholders are not significant. Oh, can't spell. Significant. There we go. That looks better. Let me give you a couple of examples. If I wrote 2,000 meters, this is an example your book gives, I can write that as 2 times 10 to the third meters. You'll notice I didn't need to have those zeros when I wrote it in scientific form. So I would say that that measurement had one significant figure. However, if I put 2,000 with a decimal at the end, meters. That means the person writing this is telling me that that last zero right before the decimal is estimated. That means I know these other ones for sure. And so to write this in scientific form, I'd have to go 2.000 times 10 to the third meters, and that would have four significant figures. Now I'm going to try to give you guys some examples of this as we work some problems in an upcoming video. Um, but these are your sig fig rules. You have to take the time to learn them. Now we're going to practice them um, in just a little bit on the next video. So we're going to do example one with the next video. You can take a look and try to do that by yourself without my help. And you can tune in for the next video and see how I did it. And then we're going to do some calculations and rounding properly with the right number of sig figs next time also. Thanks. Bye-bye.